Hey everybody, I'm Mama Bear and welcome back to my channel. So we're doing something a little special today. I am bringing in my husband. Howdy. This is, uh, this is Trey. My name is Carolina, by the way, if I've never introduced myself. And um, we're gonna be doing a little more about homesteading and showing you some of our animals. We're gonna be doing our garden this year. We have it all planned out, all of our seeds organized. And it's time to share this part of our lives with you guys. So my husband's gonna be getting in on the videos a lot more and he wanted to be in here for this one. Yep. Yep. So we're gonna get started. <laughs> so obviously uh, winter is coming to an end here. It's gonna be spring pretty soon. Um, we actually have a really late frost here in our area. So it's a little bit later for us when we can kind of get the plants out in the garden, but it's time to start preparing. So we've actually got um, our design here for our garden. You can see we've got this all planned out. Um, it's about double of what we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, so we just got some seeds in too, that we, uh, we've got to get a couple different things started now that are gonna be out in the in the garden here four to six weeks before frost so here in about a month um, so we kind of wanted to go through that with you and show you some of the seeds we got a bunch of them are from baker creek i know a lot of people are familiar with them um, they're very highly reviewed so we'll just kind of go through some of these i'm going to crack yep. one of those open and then we'll show the box first so yeah. we actually use these um photo organizers i'm going to open it <laughs> And these work really good for storing seeds. You can label them and they, they fit a seed packet perfectly. In and there's there. eight, so 16 total in yeah, each one. Yeah, per box. Yeah, and then you just We've got two different boxes here. So this is our watermelon container. Yep. They're not all facing the same way. Someone organized not, it. Not in alphabetical order, but that's okay. Who did it? Anyway. Some of these are a little older, like these ones we probably brought with us from Missouri by 12 of 19. So yeah, this one's, oh, these might germinate, they might not. Um, watermelon's not a huge grower here in Montana. But yeah, there's not quite, uh, the season's a little bit too short for watermelon. There's this Blacktail Mountain, which we just trying. bought. We're gonna be trying this year. This year. Oh, and here's another one. We have two. Yeah, two of the same one. What? I ordered two different seeds <laughs> in the room. Okay, watermelon. Spooks, hand. Spooks. Our cats are loose. I got her. I got her. All right, and then one of the first things that we're going to be putting out is onions. Um, we're going to get those in the ground here pretty soon. We are going to try starting them from seed this year instead of sets. We did sets last year and they turned out okay, but. They did not turn out okay. They were super tiny, super, super. We barely got <laughs> well, any big ones at all, but I think that was more of a user error than the onions probably. themselves, yeah. So we'll be doing some uh, yellow sweet Spanish bulbs and then uh, some typical uh, red onions. Nothing nothing too crazy, but she goes through a lot of onions in, a, in cooking. So we're gonna try and grow uh, three to 400 uh, onion bulbs. We'll yeah. see how that goes. Because I want to preserve some for storage. I would like to dehydrate some for powders and just dehydrate some in general. Hopefully we'll have our freeze dryer by then. So I'll be freeze drying a lot of this stuff. <laughs> and then what else are we going to be starting early? We got onions. Is that the only thing we're doing right now? Um, let's see. Yeah, the radishes and turnips. We are going to be doing radishes and turnips. Those grew really well uh, last year. Yeah, they did. They did fantastic getting mm -hmm. them out there well, well before frost. Um, we just kind of got some some generic uh, breakfast radishes. Nothing, nothing special. Um, but they did really good last year, and we pickled a bunch of them, which actually mm -hmm. turned out pretty good. They were mm -hmm. they were delicious. Yeah. Um, radishes, and then um, let me see if I can find the other ones. We'll be doing turnips, which are new. We haven't actually grown turnips, but they are very similar to radishes. So just some uh, purple top white turnips. I also have never we'll actually even cooked turnips before. So that'll be something new yeah, completely something for new me. Yeah, something new to try. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've kind of got a, a list here that shows uh, when we have to start everything indoors. Because um, we are trying to start as much as we can on our own without having to buy any seedlings from the store. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got 
onions, uh, spinach. We're going to be starting spinach here very soon. It can go out well before frost. Um, so we'll be starting spinach from seeds. Let's see. Where is that? I don't see it. These are just flowers. Maybe we don't have spinach seeds. Maybe we used them. I think we used them all last okay. year. Okay, well now we take notes of what you okay. need. <laughs> so yeah, we just realized we used up all of our spinach seeds last year. So we're gonna have to buy some. Yep. That's all right. Add that to the list. Um, and then uh, peas, mm -hmm. we can do very early season. Our peas, we killed our peas last year. Yeah. They did. I, th I think we got them out too late last year and the summer here hits pretty hard with it being dry and hot. Yeah. Um, so we need to get them out a lot earlier this year. And we got Lillian's case load from Baker's Creek. We're going to give that a try. And then a big thing of sugar daddies. <laughs> oh yeah. I want, I wanted both, um, the snap peas and the actual peas. Can you do, yeah, the pea snap. So these mm -hmm. are snap peas and then I actually want peas. With what we grew last year and what we harvest from them, I realized that you need to grow a lot of peas to yeah. get a they good don't harvest. Very far. Yeah, they do not at all. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the first couple of things we've got to get out, uh, get started. And then uh, next we'll be starting our tomatoes and peppers, um, which Part of the problem here is we have a very short growing season, so that makes tomatoes and peppers pretty difficult. But we're going to be getting them out um, before frost, a couple weeks before the last frost, using some um, low tunnels that I'll be making out of PVC. And we'll have a little heat lamp in there just in case it gets down to freezing. Mm -hmm. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, uh, make sure you give us a like and then subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can catch those projects here in the new future. So tomatoes, we have quite a bit of selection here. A lot of these we still have old from 19, where yeah. we had the best of intentions <laughs> of wanting to garden. We've been wanting to garden forever, and we and just... In, in my experience, starting tomatoes is fairly difficult with the small seeds. I, I didn't ever have a lot of luck starting tomatoes, but last year we actually did pretty good um, starting them here with some heat mats. So. Yeah, that was our big introduction of the heat mats was really made the difference for yeah. us. So some of these are just some generic, um, like your, your standard burpees and Romas. Sweet cherry yeah. 101s. Just some generic uh, burpee seeds you can get at the, the hardware store or whatever. Walmart, yeah. But then we've got some. Jubilees, going Jubilees. We got these from last year. We grew these last year, purple bumblebee tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Not only, yeah, these were delicious. They had beautiful color. I We didn't have any problems. Those grew great. So we, uh, and then we got the sunrise bumblebee, which is in correlation with the purple bumblebee. We're gonna give this one a try. Uh, yellow pear, my we daughter. A, yeah, we had a bunch <laughs> of those last year that we bought from a farm stand. And our daughter just ate them all yeah, as soon as they were ripe. We, we never had any in the house. No, nope, so. if she saw yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, black strawberry. This also looks like a cherry tomato. I recently discovered that cherry tomatoes freeze really well. You just throw them in a bag and freeze them as is. And then you can add them to like casseroles and stuff. So I'm going to be trying that. That's why I got a lot of cherry tomatoes. This is another cherry. Um, primary colors. I just it's got a little, little uh, splash of color. Yeah, mm -hmm. it kind of looks like mm -hmm. a tomatillo mixed with a tomato a little bit mm -hmm. in there. I, and I just got on the Baker's Creek website and just looked at ones I thought were good and I wanted to grow this year. And we grew some white tomatoes. This is a great white tomato. Last year we bought at a farm stand a white tomato. And we're like, what? Mm -hmm. White tomatoes? We had no idea. And they were delicious. Yeah, they got huge too. They were they were solid uh, softball sized yeah. tomatoes. Totally hard to tell when they were ripe because of the... The, yeah, the color. The color, yeah. You had to really, like, you got to give them a good squeeze every day, you know, to see what their what their ripeness is. But they were really good. Yeah. I felt like they weren't as acidic as the mm -hmm. the red ones. So, like, BLTs, it wasn't as harsh, you know, the acid. And then just some Bonnie's Best. I really want some San Marzero. We used all of ours, and we killed a lot yeah, of ours we, last year by putting them out too early. We need to find some some seeds for mm -hmm. San, San Marzano. I like those better than Romas, but it's a it's a San Marzero. Sa San Marzano. Marzano are right. San Marzano are um, sauce tomatoes. Yeah. So like a Roma, just slightly different variety. Yeah, and it's not as uh, watery, so they're better for sauces. So that's a lot of tomatoes, different types of tomatoes. I'm probably, I thought I had a purple tomato. 
Nope, not yet. All right, well, I have some more. And then peppers, we have a lot. All right, yeah, and then peppers. Uh, we've got quite a variety of them as well. Um, a lot of these, again, Baker's Creek. We've got some uh, Zapotec jalapenos we're going to try out. Uh, purple beauties. Uh, this is the wife's favorite. Her favorite color is purple. So I'm going to try some purple peppers. Uh, these blot peppers are supposed to be a sweet, just kind of a, a neat color that'll go kind of uh, along with those uh, sunrise. Uh, tomatoes? Tomatoes, yeah. Yeah, perfect it's for very, salads. Very yeah. similar color. So that'll be neat. All right, and then we got some mini bell mix here. They're just like a bell pepper, just smaller. Those are pretty neat. Also uh, for snacking. Yeah, yeah snacking. Uh, classic California Wonders. We've got a couple different um, uh, brands here of those. The Baker's Creek and whatnot. But Baker's Creek and then um, Botanical, that. yeah. Yeah, Botanical. So those are your classic bell pepper, you know, for cooking. Uh, Tabasco's, we're going to try some hot peppers this year. Yeah, I want to make some hot sauce. Yeah, which we did uh, salsa too. We can do some hotter salsa. We did salsa last year, mm -hmm. and maybe we can do a little bit spicy salsa. So Tabasco's, um, habaneros here. I want to grow some more habaneros this year, even though I do not handle spicy food. I don't well, know why he I, wants to grow. I like the, I like the flavor <laughs> of habanero. Uh, and then sweet banana. I'm a big fan of banana peppers. Mm -hmm. Um, and then these ones, these are an orange bell pepper called uh, Etuida peppers. I'm not sure how you pronounce that exactly, but they look delicious, so we're going to give those a shot. I also cook with a lot of bell peppers, so, and I've never had good luck growing bell peppers, so we're going to give it our all. <laughs> <laughs> and then these we did last year, these Murasaki purple peppers. We grew some of those. Um, they really had no flavor mm -hmm. whatsoever, but they're, they're a good decorative pepper. Um, for like if you're doing canning, you can put some slices of those in your canned goods. Um, and it will just kind of add a little bit of color to them. So. For a warning though, the, they do lose their color when they're pickled. Oh, it yes. It sucks out the purple. I do, yeah. I think in the, in the vinegar. Yes. Like took the color out of them and kind it of did. turned purple. It did. But, but they're, they're pretty neat to grow. Yeah. They're fun. And they have beautiful purple flowers. And you know, I'm, I'm a purple lady. So if anything's got purple flowers, I'll grow it. We do have a couple of flowers, speaking of those. Uh, morning Glory, I got two of these. Apparently I want to grow some Morning Glory and never have. So I got this one. She buys have. all these flower seeds and they mm, never get planted. I know. This year though. Marigolds, I heard that if you plant these around your tomatoes, it helps with pests. We don't really have too many pests. Last year, a problem with those. Yeah, we really, really had very few um, pests up here. We had cabbage worms. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and some of our cabbage and our broccoli. cauliflower and, and broccoli. broccoli. But that was that was really the only pest that we had. Aphids weren't really a problem. Or, squash bugs. Yeah, aphid, anything like squash. that. So. What are those big caterpillars? Like the big. Oh yeah, the, the big green tomato yeah, caterpillars. Green horn. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I think we only had. Saw maybe one or two of those, Five but the chi the chickens run around in our garden too throughout the summer, so that helps a lot. Hey. Down with pests. Let us know so. when the tomatoes are ripe. They peck them <laughs> enough, yeah. And then we got a free seed with my Baker's Creek order, and it's lavender beauty. So that's Flocks. pretty. Yep. Flocks. Oh, no. Flocks. oh yeah, Flocks. And then just some more of the cheap ones. Save the bees. You know, we'll just plant these somewhere. And, and then the kids got a free butterfly kit, building kit at. Um, Lowe's. Last yeah, yeah, year we yeah. were just in there looking at plants and this lady's like, here, would you like one? I gave them three free butterfly kits and it comes with common milkweed that we yep. can plant for those. Different corns, yep. kales. Another one we hit pretty hard is our beans. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot last year and we're going to try and do even more this year because they, again, they do not go very far. You need a lot of plants to make a lot of beans. Yes. So we've got some of your your classic um, Blue Lake bush beans, uh, which we'll, we'll do those. For green beans. Yeah, mostly, yeah. Those yeah. are your standard uh, long green beans that you cook the, the meat of them. Um, these were really neat, these uh, Triple Divide Midnight Black Turtle Beans. So Triple Divide is actually a Montana-based company that sells um, seeds for varieties of plants that are specifically... Uh, grown here in Montana and they do very well with the weather here. So we've got these, these uh, turtle dry beans. They were, uh, was it these ones? Yep. 
Okay, yeah, this is actually uh, how they look after you shell them. They're these really nice dark uh, black beans, and they were pretty awesome. So we're gonna grow a bunch. And of they those. didn't grow very big at all. They yeah, were. Yeah, they were short. Bushes. They were short. Ow. Yeah, they were short. They would make good like container gardening mm -hmm. beans. Those would do good there. Yeah. Yep. And then we're going to be trying some fava beans. Uh, that's a new one for us. Um, we'll kind of see how those grow here in, in Montana. I'm not sure, but we're going to give them a shot. Yeah, that's more of me wanting to try them because um, I lived in overseas in Saudi Arabia for a while when I was younger, and we would have this breakfast called um, Ful, F-U-L, and it was a bean dip, and it was made out of fava beans, and I just really remember it, and I would like to recreate it, and by golly, I'm going to grow my own beans to do it. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. <laughs> So that's our beans, and I think we need another container here. So I don't know if those black beans are gonna grow. If you can save them like that, then regrow them, or if they have to be. Yeah, it should be able to. We're gonna try planting some of them. We'll yeah, see. we'll see. I'll put those around here. And then I canned some of my own as well. So yeah. Like I, I remember shelling for days. I just put something on Netflix and just sat in front of it shelling for days, and then after all of it was done, I got five pints of black beans. <laughs> and I was like, we need more beans. All right, and then we've got uh, some varieties of corn here that we're going to be doing, which we did last year some, um, what was it, just, it was like a generic uh, cream corn, mm -hmm. and then we did um, some of this Montana lavender clay corn, which again is specifically from Montana here, um, but they, turn, they turned out to have really um, small ears of corn, they were maybe an inch in diameter, four to five inches long. So I think it's more of a decorative. It's not really um, it for eating, but they were beautiful. So we'll do some more of those. You can make cornmeal out of it. Yeah, that's true. Um, we're going to try some strawberry popcorn. We're going to plant some of that because our kids absolutely adore popcorn. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and do that and grow our own popcorn. We'll see how that goes. Um, again, some generic cream corn. That's probably what we planted last year. Yeah, yeah, I think this is the one I don't, uh, it's the botanical interests, mm -hmm. but uh, just some generic cream corn. Um, again, some more here, just your average yellow corn. And then last, we're gonna be doing some of the uh, glass gem corn that everyone raves about. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people um, do videos on planting this and, and stuff and harvesting it. It's very popular amongst the homesteaders. So we'll be do doing some of that this year. Yep. It's very beautiful and has all different types of colors and like if you want specifically like more of a blue cob then you plant a blue kernel and it that's a it should be a blue mostly blues right when it grows. primarily yeah when it grows yeah so i'm really excited about that <laughs> <laughs> all right so corn all right and then we just got a few others like this kale um this is the one the triple divide so the montana one and I just got a gardener's mix, which it says uh, white and red Russian, scarlet, cyber frill, and blue scotch curled. So it's going to have all different kind types of, of kale. Yeah. yeah, and I'm growing some of this for us. And then I also want to give it for like the chickens and the goats and give them some kale too. The, go the goats last year adored the kale. Oh my gosh. So. And it was great because it just kept growing back. They would yeah, eat it and it would grow very back. fast growing <laughs> yes. with all the water. <laughs> So, yeah. And then we're just going to do a couple different types of pumpkins. Last year, our pumpkins did great. Yeah, we did a couple did fantastic. of sugar pie ones. And then we had, I don't know if yeah, we did. I think that's what we grew last year. Was, yeah, the was Cherokee bush. Yeah, for some of the big ones. Yeah. And then we bought sugar pie yes. um, seedlings. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so we got some sugar pie and then Connecticut Field, your your classic carving pumpkin. Mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. try some of those. And then New England sugar pie. Yep. Right. We've got a couple varieties of lettuce here. We're going to try and do more greens this year for our own we salads. We always say that. We're we always like, say that. But, <laughs> but like yeah. seriously, this year, we want to start eating more salads. So now. we actually got Italian greens. Um, we'll give those a <coughs> shot here. Let's see that one. Oh. And then uh, your typical, you know, uh, butter crunch lettuce. Nothing, nothing crazy. Some red lettuce. We might do a little bit of that. I like there, the butter but crunch. The butter crunch. Yeah. Need to do more salads. So. We do. We do. <laughs> and I just recently started experimenting with making my own vinaigrettes and and salad dressings, and they're really good. Mm -hmm. So I really have faith that we will be eating more salads. 
Then we've got some cucumbers, uh, these beet alphas. Uh, these are supposed to be the uh, perfect canning and pickling mm -hmm. cucumber, um, which last year we did a bunch of our own pickles, but those were from uh, cucumbers that we actually bought at the farmer's market. Locally. Yeah, because we killed ours because yeah, we put our, them out too early. We started some last year, but they died from the frost. Not so. used to Montana <laughs> being all the way until the end of May. Yep. Frost, yeah. So we're gonna try and do that again and have, have some of our own pickles. Try and knock those out. Yeah, the farmer's market was great though. So yeah, we, we, we have a, a big old very bag good mm -hmm. uh, farmer's market community here. They have everything. If you can't find it in one town, you can go down to the next town and find it there, honestly. Brussels sprouts, but we have seeds, but we're not going to do Brussels sprouts yeah, this year. They, they did not work out for us. I think they take a little too long for our, our the portion of our season that's cold here. Yeah. They take a little bit too long. So. Oh, you put the cantaloupe in the squash container. That's, it's a melon. Close enough. It is not. <laughs> So you roast this we got some cantaloupe, <laughs> sweet melons. <laughs> and then spaghetti squash, you know, that always stores really well. So we She like likes them. it a lot better than I do. I don't, I'm not a fan of the texture, but. Yeah. And then I actually saved some butternut squash seeds <laughs> from a local one that I got. Oh, was it? Yeah, this is from a local squash. So I don't know yeah, if they would grow or those. not, but you know. I, try. I think we've got a couple of those on our plan. If not, I actually want to buy some too. We might buy um, seedlings then yeah. if. So we actually plan on doing the uh, melons and the squash over a trellis. It's kind of hard to see, but it'll be over a uh, an archway over the turnips. Melons on one side, squash on the other side. So we'll see how that turns out. It's kind of a new thing we're going to experiment with. And carrots is another varieties we got. Yeah. A lot of carrots. Yeah. We got this free seed, the St. Valerie one. We got that from Baker's Creek. So that'll be nice to kind try. Typical store here. Yeah. Yep, some burbies. These are from 18. These, uh, <laughs> so we'll see if these. Four years old now. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. We might do these separately. Say, seeds are four years old. What are they planting? No, <laughs> let we'll see. We'll do that. And purple dragon. Purple's my favorite. I gotta grow this purple. Um, Last year we drew, grew a purple carrot. It was a mix though, yeah, so I don't know what kind it was, but it was still orange on the inside. It was yeah, really pretty. Really cool. And then these Lug Long. Long Rouge Song. What he said, carrot there, and that looks really pretty. It looks all rainbow inside. And then these are supposed to be a pretty good, just short, sweet carrot. So I'm going to try this. New Corona. Yep. New Corona. New Corona. I don't think that's it. <laughs> All right. So that's actually it for this container. And then we've got one more here that's about half full. Um, that just means we, we need more out of it. We've got we've got some asparagus um, seeds here, which we've we've done in the past. Um, the problem is asparagus. It takes a couple of years for it to really. Um, kick into production so you you want to plant that in an area that you're going to be at for a while like three years yeah totally so you can harvest from it we'll save those until we're at our big homestead when we buy some land so three years we've got some cabbage uh we're going to be doing this year some more of it uh copenhagen market just your generic uh green head of cabbage mm -hmm. um so we we do a lot of that and we made a lot of uh coleslaw yeah, Last I canned year, coleslaw. Out of, out of cabbage. And um, I didn't need sauerkraut because I did sauerkraut the year before. Yeah, we have a ton of sauerkraut. Yeah, I need to use it. <laughs> but we'll be doing some cabbage. Um, did we did we decide on broccoli? I think it's on our plan. Yeah, I think yeah. it is on our plan. Yeah, broccoli. So we've got um, let's see. some uh, rapini. Um, this is actually broccoli rob, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different than your regular head of broccoli. So we're going to mix that in a little bit. That's and our first year growing that. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a new thing. And then just some Waltham, standard heads of broccoli, nothing crazy. How old's that one? Oh, that's a good question. These are from 12 of 19. Okay. So. A couple years old. Yeah, too. yeah, just over two years old. But I, knew, I know these germinated last year because I used some of these last year. And they worked okay. So we'll do those. And then right next to the broccoli, um, an interesting one that we found last year we liked was kohlrabi. Mm -hmm. I we, actually shredded that and added it to the coleslaw. Yeah, yeah, it turned out really good. You did some big slices pickled too. Didn't yes. You, with the mixed veggies. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I did some pickled mixed veggies. It was really good. Yeah, so we've got this year uh, purple Vienna kohlrabi. I think we did, we did what, what, all white last year. 
Yeah, we grew the purple and we bought the green ones. Right. So we'll we'll germinate some more of these this year and give those a shot. Purple kohlrabi. And then zucchini. Um, again, it was, it was really interesting. I've never had a problem growing zucchini uh, back in Missouri for years. It was always super easy. The, uh, the classic black beauty zucchini. You could get a, a zucchini bush four or five feet in diameter uh, with really no effort whatsoever. They grew extremely well. Mm -hmm. But we grew some plants last year and they only got maybe a foot in diameter and the zucchini that came off of them were really small. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that was um, a lack of water or if they weren't just getting enough sun. Not sure, but we're going to try them again this year. Did we move them in a different spot? Yes, they are in a different spot. Okay. They should have more sun this year. So we'll give Plus we're doing Black shot. Beauty versus last year was just a regular. We bought that. Yeah, they were just like a, a garden zucchini. Yeah, I don't there. think it was specifically Black Beauty. Right. Uh, let's see. We'll, we're going to be starting some berries too. Actually, we'll be doing huckleberries, mm -hmm. which are very popular here in Montana. Virtually everywhere you go has some sort of a huckleberry product you can buy. Um, whether it's syrup at the coffee stand you can get in your in your coffee or um, huckleberry ice cream. Just all sorts of different things. Oh, yeah. So we'll be starting our own huckleberries. I think we're going to do them in some containers. Yes. Because, some large pots, yeah. Because we would like, we're just renting right now, so we would like to eventually take them to the homestead. So I would like to transfer them. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be doing some container huckleberries. We'll see how that goes. That'll be interesting. All right, and then last, we've got herbs, which we have quite the collection of herbs. Who's herb? <laughs> yeah. We've, we've got the herb. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is something wife buys all sorts of herb seeds, and we never get around to quite all of them, but... Um, the main ones we're going to be trying, I think. We've got, we've got a, little, uh, a little herb garden. In the garden, it's a raised bed that has it's kind of set up for herbs. Um, so we're going to be trying some parsley, uh, tarragon. Uh, let's see, there's lavender, uh, mustard. This is actually going in the main garden. This yeah. isn't going in the, in the raised bed. This will be going in the main garden. We're going to try and do a bunch of mustard. She wants to harvest uh, some mustard seed and some mustard greens. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, classic cilantro. And then I bought a sol slow bolt cilantro as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Which is actually probably what we're going to put That'll be much yeah. better, yeah, with our with the heat that we get here. So mm -hmm. try that. Uh, white mustard seeds. So this will actually be the one we harvest seeds from. And do that one in the garden. Uh, dill. We actually had a great experience with dill last year. We got some plants, but they grew absolutely phenomenal. They got ginormous, and we mm -hmm. had dill for days in all of our... Um, in all of our canned goods that we pickle. So we'll grow some more dill. Uh, do, 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 let's see. And then we got some more Baker Creek ones here. So we got chives, rosemary, uh, basil, thyme, and then lemon balm. Yeah. So we'll just kind of do a variety of those, maybe in some containers also, but also in the raised bed too. So. Yeah, we'll just kind of kind of wing that and see how it works out. <laughs> Last year with me, um, I dried my herbs and with me cooking a lot more, I realized that I did not grow enough. Especially oregano I'm already out of, basil. The birds got to the basil. Yeah, well, we had a bad time with basil last year. <laughs> yeah. The birds loved it. So. They did. That was weird. It was the only the one. The birds really liked the basil. They, they did, did really. <laughs> remember that? They ate on they, mom's basil. They, they ate it all? Yeah. They did. They did. But, but we have more. And we're yeah, going to grow more. more this year, yeah. yeah. And then this is one. It's probably a couple years yeah, old. Yeah, that's... 19. Yeah. 19. yeah. And this is just an herb blend mixture. So. Yeah, so... Like, time already. I ran out of time. I'm always out of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's it for our seed haul. Kind of... Uh, the first few things we're going to be starting this year. Get ready for the growing season. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll be doing those here, here soon. And stick around and catch that one. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and I uh, uh, think we'll go check on the animals. We need to feed the and goats. Feed, and feed Bonnie. And feed Bonnie. we got to see if she's had her baby yet. We've got a goat that has kids on the way, so 
We'll see how that's going. Maybe. And she, yeah, and Bonnie's having a baby. At least one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think two. She thinks two. I think two babies. Two babies? And if she gets two babies, then we're going to have five goats. You're right. Good that job. was great math. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right, let's go. All right, guys. We wanted to show you some of our animals out here and introduce you to everybody because we're going to start doing a lot more outdoor projects now that spring's on the way mm -hmm. with our garden and uh, our kind of our homestead set up here. So we'll introduce you to everybody real quick. All right, so over here we got our stud Buck. Buck, say hi. He's a shy guy, but he's, he's nice. This is Bonnie. This is going to be our soon-to-be mama. You see that belly? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Bonnie. Bonnie, say hi. You know, you're like, you're not mm -hmm. food. Yeah. Probably another week or two. Yep, we're waiting. We're counting down. We're checking every day, waiting for her to have her baby. I felt it the other day. I don't know if there's two in there. We'll find out. Chicken. And this is Grandma. We got all three goats together as one herd. They also came with a couple more, what, four more? Yeah, seven yeah. total. Yeah. Seven total goats we got at one time. So that was a good way for us to cheaply get our goats. So that was kind of a cheap way for us to get our goats was waiting for someone to be selling their whole herd. And then we bought nah. all of it and then picked which ones we wanted and then sold the rest and pretty much made our money back. Yeah, yeah, they By were doing basically it that way. free. Yeah. The way it worked out, so. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be getting some milk here soon, some goat milk, whenever mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie has her kid. We're going to try milking her and maybe have another uh, doe or a, a buck to, to sell or have for meat. So, let's we'll kind of see how that goes. They're all La Macha crosses, so they should be pretty good for a good dual purpose. Grandma's a couple years old. She's had a couple babies. Bonnie, this is her second, her second pregnancy. We obviously weren't here for her first. And then Buck, he's he's less than a year. Yeah, I think he's two years. Oh, he's two years. Mm -hmm. he's two years old. Okay, and Buck's two years old over there. He's a good-looking boy. And then we just got a complete mix of chickens. All of our chickens we have also pretty much got for free. I think we bought six of them. So we've got uh, sixteen chickens right now and two ducks um, so they give us a pretty good variety of eggs they're all they're all laying hens um, some are akanas the rest are just kind of a barnyard mix yep let's see we got six of them from our neighbors they didn't want theirs anymore and then there was a lady looking to sell a bunch of her flock so we got eight think, from her eight or ten from her which a lot of these aracanas are from her and then we bought the two red ones when they were chicks. We had two gold ones, which are there. Two uh, gold lace. And two gold right lace, up. which we still have, yeah. We have a lot more luck with our chickens here than we have in Missouri. There's a lot more predators in Missouri, knock on wood. But yeah, we're just gonna go check on some eggs. We kinda, the chicken coop, it's not really the best setup. This was here when we moved here. So we haven't really done much to it. Needs a good cleaning. Got a little scratch block for him. This is a duck house. Got no eggs in there. Let's see down here. We're also going to be giving, getting them some more nesting boxes because they just have two right now. So we're hoping to build two more at least over here. All right, and then. Several of our chickens and our ducks have become partial to laying in our goat house here where the goats stay. And they've got a nice little clutch of eggs down here for us today. Like my wife is saying, we need to get them some more nest boxes in the coop, but they just kind of like this area. I think they can dig around in the straw in here. And the ducks really like it. We got four duck eggs, which is a slight problem sometimes because I am highly allergic to duck eggs. They make me deathly ill. But she can use them in uh, a lot of the cooking for the children and herself, so it works out okay. It's a makeshift feeder that husband built for the goats themselves. You just, you know, throw together. <laughs> oh yeah, good stuff. Oh, no, no, no. 
All right, so that's kind of it for our little uh, mini homestead as far as the animals go. We'll take you on a short tour for the garden, even though there's not a whole lot to show yet, but we'll be starting on it soon. All right, guys, and then uh, we've got our garden area here. Um, got a little bit of snow coming in behind us there, it looks like. So we're still not quite out of winter yet. Spring's coming, but not quite yet. We've got about a 3,000 foot square foot garden here, I think. Um, we did it pretty big last year, but we're going to try and pretty much double our output this year. Um, but it's going to be end of May, I think, is the, is the uh, last frost date here. So we've got quite a ways to go. We're just getting mm -hmm. ready to start some stuff indoors. And uh, we're going to do some high tunnels to uh, try and get the peppers and tomatoes out early. But the rest of the stuff we'll just kind of have to wait on. So here's our garden area. See here we've got uh, on the side there a whole row of raspberries back in there and a little, little herb bed and then the rest of this is just open planting whatever we want to put we had a big area of potatoes here last year that did really well so we're going to do those again and just a whole bunch of other stuff so this is going to be our uh, our second year in this garden so we learned that over in that corner was really shadowed and shady so we're going to start a lot of the spinach and kind of just the cabbages ones that don't need a lot of sun that you kind of want in the shaded area so we've learned about that area we only perennials we have are some strawberries that we have planted here you can see too i kind of installed last year an automatic uh watering system along the uh fence line here all the way around that has sprinklers on all four corners and here in the middle that worked really good because we don't get a whole lot of rain out here it's very dry throughout the summer so it takes a lot of water to keep everything growing but we're gonna give it another shot so and last but not least we've got our baby chicks we got these um, two weeks ago some of them you can see these ones here these larger ones that are starting to get their flight feathers those are Rudd Rangers, and they're a variant of the Red Ranger meat bird. So those should be done at 10 to 12 weeks. So another 8 to 10 from where they're at now. And then over here we've got Cornish Cross chicks, which are done in 8 weeks. They are 1 week old right now, so they will actually be done before the Rangers. We're going to try to stagger them like that. we got 17 of them all together though. And we've raised a lot of um, chicks, but always always uh, egg-laying chickens, never really meat birds. So these are a little bit different. They're growing super fast. Um, I think one of them kind of has a, uh, a little bit of a bum leg, which unfortunately comes with the Cornish Cross breed. They do grow a little uh, differently sometimes, but otherwise they're doing... Really good, really healthy, eating like crazy. Oh, I do a lot of food, yeah. Yep. So here in about uh, two, two and a half months, we'll be doing some chicken harvesting, and we'll show you how that goes. Thanks for watching us in our seed haul. That's what we got for you today. We look forward to our garden season this year. Is there anything you guys are growing? You know, let us know in the comments below. But that's what we got for you, and we'll catch you next time on Mama Birds. Thanks. We'll see you later. <laughs>